Hello, I'm Ron Clark. So, I published my first, or rather my first commentary on initiation into hermetics was published 20 years ago. And 10 years ago, about, I wrote a, an entirely new commentary on initiation into hermetics and published that. Now, 10 years later, it's time for yet another um, venture into discussing initiation into hermetics. For years, people have been writing to me asking if they can be my student. And I've always said no, because well, there's a number of reasons. Number one, I don't have any connection to that sort of uh, power dynamic between people of teacher and student. I, it seems unproductive to me. I learn from everything around me and I, I want to encourage that instead of, oh teacher, tell me what to do, what to think, how to do it. Um, and as it relates to initiation into hermetics, Initiation in her, Hermetics, the book by Franz Barden, is all you need. You don't need someone to tell you how to do the exercises in the book. They're written down, they're very plain, there you go. A lot of people need encouragement, though. And, you know, I, I respect that and I understand that because I needed encouragement when I was starting out. But I, I didn't find any encouragement anywhere. So I had to bring it from within. And I had to commit myself to doing the work. And that's what it comes down to. Everybody talks about how difficult it is. I don't have the time in my life. I'm working full time. I just don't have the time for sitting down and doing exercises every day. And, you know, that's what I thought, but I proved that to be a load of hooey. I mean, it's just not true. We can do anything with our lives that we truly choose to do. It's up to you. It's not up to anybody else, any circumstance, etc. It's just simply up to you to take that choice. So... What I am going to do is I am going to create a sort of workbook, a video and paper workbook for the first three steps of initiation into hermetics. Uh, this video is going to be primarily on step one. Next video, step two. Next video, step three. Um, and it follows the timing laid down in initiation into hermetics. As some of it's sort of hard to see, but believe me, this is the timing of the first three steps. Within six to eight months, you should have completed the first three steps of initiation into hermetics. By then, you're well on your way. You have developed the habits that you need to develop to really truly pursue initiation into hermetics. Now, I'm doing this now um, because, I mean, look at the world around you. Time is running out. We need people. We need people who are human beings with the powers that human beings possess, well-trained and ready to help you know, because there's going to be, we're all going to need help. That's all there is to it. We're going to need help, and we're going to need to help each other. And by pursuing initiation into Hermetics, the book, these exercises, we develop the powers that we have as human beings that are creative and helpful and will be needed in the future, that I need it right now, but even more so in the future. Time is a-wasting. It's running out on us. 
we don't have much time left to develop ourselves to be the human beings that we can be, to have the powers that will heal the earth, that will heal each other. That's what it's all about. Right now, that is what it's all about. So, I encourage you to pick up this work. If you've already sort of started it, you know, you've been dabbling with step one for the past year and a half, or step two for the past four or five years, etc. And I know that a lot of people are in that position. They have the desire to do it, but they haven't done it. They haven't committed themselves to doing it. And this is what it takes. This is what it really takes, is the commitment to do it. To reshape your life so that it, it becomes really the center of your life. Everything else really just supports this pursuit. That's the thing. You have to decide. And by decide, I mean you have put your will on this and you're going to pursue it no matter what. You have to treat it like, like you're pursuing a doctorate in college because it is that serious, okay? You have to be truly serious about this and committed. Otherwise, don't do it. Do something else with your life. But if hermetics, initiation into hermetics, truly calls to you, you have to decide now to do it. Period. Uh, let me... Uh, first, you need this book, obviously, Initiation to Hermetics. I uh, recommend the Rugeberger edition, the uh, translation by Rugeberg. It is the best. Uh, the uh, Merker translation is biased in a lot of instances. It communicates its bias more than it communicates the this, this source material of Franz Barden. So, get the Rugeberg if you can get it. There will be another English edition coming out. Um, put out by Czech Hermetics, I believe, uh, which will probably be better than the Rugeberg edition. and uh, It will be true to Franz Bardon's writing. Um, I want to read just a little bit of uh, the introduction here to Step 1. And it's some very important points. Ah. Uh, The pains taken in one's development will be amply rewarded. <clears throat> Whosoever is willing to enter the magic path should regard it as his sacred duty to practice regular exercises. You have to be committed to doing this, period. <clears throat> he ought to be kind, generous, and tolerant with his fellow men but relentless and hard with himself. That is so true. You've got to be kind and gentle and forgiving to the world around you, but be absolutely demanding and firm with yourself. <clears throat> Only such a behavior will be followed by success and magic. Refain, refrain the from condemning or criticizing how easy it is in this modern world to get stuck in your brain thinking, oh, that's stupid. Oh, how could they do that? So, you need to stop putting your mental energy there and sweep first before your own doorsteps. In other words, you got to take care of your own shit. That's the only thing you can do, that you can change that is a productive place to put your attention is on transforming the self. That's what initiation is about. Okay? Do not permit anyone to look into your sanctuary. Magician will always keep silence with respect to his way, rise, and success. Don't brag about what you're doing. I mean, this isn't making you special. 
This is just making you a human being. It's not something that you want to expose because it's delicate, especially in the beginning, it's a fragile thing, is you're trying to build these habits and this discipline. That's something you've got to protect, okay? Do manage it so that you spend as much time as possible in your rise or advance. Literally, it... it, it it becomes the anchor, the center point of your life, and everything else is a reflection of this work that you're doing to transform yourself. It is quite unnecessary to waste time with sitting for hours watching television, Netflix, the computer, drinking beer, and passing time in trivial company. Time is running away like water to never come back again. Ah, when I first started, I looked at my life and saw how much of my time was just wasted on trivial things, you know. Uh, you know, enjoying my life, definitely, I enjoyed life. But it was all frivolous. Not all, but so much of it was frivolous, wasting time. So I also looked at my future and I thought, well, you know, 10 years from now I could have spent 10 more years just sort of dancing around in life, or I could have started this work, developed these habits and developed these abilities and developed myself for 10 years. And I looked at the contrast between who I would be Ten years of just the same old, same old, and ten years of actually doing something significant and important with my time. And I decided that it's just easier to do it than to have, in ten years, look back and say, well, fuck, I wasted all my time. So, <clears throat> the choice is yours. A certain amount of time ought to be provided for. Of course, because we're human beings and we have to live our life with these people around us. We have to take care of them as well. But it's not necessary to stick to it. You know, you don't have to stick to those habits of wasting time. We can change those habits. Exceptions ought to be allowed, but only in quite inevitable cases. Fairly simple. Man is subject to habits, and once accustomed to a definite timetable for his exercises, he will feel compelled to do his exercises. In the same way as there is a want for the necessities of life, such as eating, drinking, and sleeping, it ought to happen in regard to the exercises which must become, as it were, a habit. This is the sole way to attain a sure and full success. There is no prize without diligence. You've got to commit. It is easy. It becomes easier and easier. Once the habit is formed, it becomes a habit. And you do it automatically. And that's what the habit needs to be. It needs to become a rhythm of this is what I do every morning when I wake up. This is what I do every evening before I go to bed. And it, the, the, the day has to pivot on these two events. The morning rituals, the morning habits, and the evening habits. The meditations, the exercises, the, 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 cold, the cold water ba bathing and the brushing and blah, blah, blah. The exercise, the breathing, the... And then in the evening, the return to the meditations and the exercises, and it ends the day, and then starts the day, and ends the day, and starts the day. And pretty soon, it fills the day. It all bleeds over into the rest of your life. Okay, I'm going to be putting up some pages over here <laughs> for you to view. Um, now, this first one is a summary 
of all the exercises in step one divided into their mental, astral, and physical component, you know, sections, at any rate. To begin with, uh, before I go into these, um, you will need to stop all mind-altering, all brain-altering substances that you indulge in. Uh, everything from coffee and tea, you know, caffeinated coffee and tea, to uh, smoking, uh, cigarettes or, or uh, cannabis, uh, drinking alcohol, uh, in engaging in any hallucinatory uh, drugs of any kind, uh, if you are, are on medications that alter your brain function, uh, you should discuss that with your medical professional to see if there's any way to avoid those drugs. And if there's, if there's not, then you'll just have to persevere in the presence of these uh, mind-altering medications. So in step one specifically, and this goes only for step one, um, you, you need to uh, learn what your brain and mind do without any interference. You need to have the control uh, subject as your brain, your brain in its natural state of function. Okay? So, before you begin, you need to deal with that. Any, um, any mind-altering substances at all. If you have addiction issues, you really need to take care of those addiction issues before you begin this, this work. Because, I mean, that's such a monumental thing, usually, that it takes the whole of your focus, and you won't have any focus left over for the initiation into Hermetics work, okay? Um, yeah, I think that's all we need to cover on it. Ah, you should also have read the theory part of initiation into Hermetics. Read through it, read through the whole book before you begin, so you have some concept of what you're getting yourself into. And believe me, you only have some concept. Uh, the perception of the steps in the future changes as you do the work. So, uh, what sounds fantastical at this point is not fantastical once you have done the preceding work. Anyway, uh, so read the theory section because you're going to use the theory section in some of your meditations. So read through it first and let it sink in a little bit. Okay, so, on this first page here, we show uh, the mental exercises of step one. They break down into three uh, basic uh, uh, types. First is observation, a detached observation. You have to learn in this stage, this phase of the exercises, the difference between mind and brain, okay? When you close your eyes, we have two things happening here. We have the mind, which is your awareness, and we have the brain. Now, the brain is doing certain things. It's thinking. It's thinking thoughts. And that's what the brain generally does when we close our eyes. It thinks thoughts. It's doing it all the time. It's commenting on things, it's thinking about things, it's all just constant stream of just fleeting thoughts, okay? That's the brain, that's not the mind. So this first exercise, called thought control, um, in, the, in the translation, um, is about learning and feeling and knowing this difference between mind, the awareness inside when you close your eyes, 
and the brain, which throws up all these thoughts and images. So, what we learn in this exercise is the difference between these two and what happens in the brain when we stop participating with our mind. See, that's the thing. Normally, our mind and our brain, uh, our brain sort of leads our mind. Uh, the mind gets involved in the thoughts that are arising in the brain. But it doesn't have to. That's a choice that we have. So we're learning to exercise that choice. So we choose not to become involved and to just watch, just observe what is happening in the brain. Okay? That is the very first type of meditation that we learn. And then we take that attentiveness into our daily life. But uh, the, the different, the second uh, uh, type of uh, meditation is contemplation, where we, having reached this understanding of uh, the relationship between mind and brain, uh, and gain that ability to disengage from what goes on in the brain, what we do then as is we give uh, in that space, we take an idea, an idea, a thought, um, an idea, it's plain and simple. This is where the theory section will come into play. You take one of the topics in the theory section and you stick it in your mind. What happens then is the brain participates and starts thinking about this idea that you have presented to it. So this is contemplation, where we fill the mind, and then subsequently the brain takes over. Uh, fill the mind with an idea. And we contemplate it. We let our mind roam through the territory of that idea. That's the second type of meditation. The third type of meditation is, instead of filling our mind with that idea and having the brain participate, we disengage from the brain and we empty our mind of ideas, of any thought at all. So we focus instead on the silence between thoughts and we push away all thoughts that arise. This is called the emptiness, the vacancy or emptiness of mind. So that's the third type of meditation and that is what step one is meant to achieve, to acclimate you to these three types of meditation. Very simply, You're, this is going to be a habit of a lifetime. You are at the beginning of every day and in the evening with the beginning of every um, session of exercises, you are going to first observe the mind, the brain, for a minute and watch it calm down. You are then going to contemplate. You are going to think, you know, contemplate a certain idea, and then you are going to enter the emptiness. And that's going to begin your exercises from now on. That's a lovely regimen. It's very cleansing, calming, and focusing of the mind, which you will need for the other exercises. Okay? So, <clears throat> the astral exercises for the first month are all about your soul mirror, soul mirrors, where you are going to construct your two soul mirrors, your black or negative soul mirror that is full of all of your negative traits, and your white or positive soul mirror, which is full of all your positive traits. So you're going to make these two lists. The majority of the time is going to be spent on your negative uh, uh, soul mirror. You're the black soul mirror. Uh, so you start out, you make a list. You get a physical uh, notebook, 
uh, that you can, and it has pages in it, uh, just a loose leaf kind of, you pull the pages out, is good. And you are going to write down. Um, there is a magic in writing down the lists of your traits. You are going to write all your negative traits. Get as many as you can. Just as many as you can. And meditate on your character. Think about your character. This is where you use the, the, uh, um, the contemplation. All of the contemplation, once you start this process, goes towards your character transformation, the creation of your mirrors, how you transform your character, etc. Um, so, you create this list, then after you create the list, you assign each of these items to the elements, the four elements. Um, fire, water, air, and earth, okay? So, once you've assigned them to the elements, and it's... You are just assigning them uh, by virtue of how much you understand the elements. It's, there's no right way to do this. You just do the best that you can you will inevitably be wrong about some of them, but that's fine. You can reassign them later. No problem. This list is not written in stone. You're always going to be modifying this list as you begin the work of self-transformation, especially. You're going to be crossing things off the list. Okay? So, you make the list. You assign the items to the elements. And then you rate them uh, by virtue of their significance. You know, um, how often these negative traits arise, how strongly they arise, etc. You'll know which are your major negative traits that you've just got to deal with uh, first. So, you go through and you make this two lists, well, three lists now, the list of traits, the raw list, the list of their elemental uh, groupings, and then a list of their strengths. It's good to uh, do each of the elemental lists separately, like the strongest fire uh, would be in one list, um, the, the strongest air in another list, etc. Okay? So, that will take you all month, well, Excuse me, I'm forgetting another part of that. About a third of the work will be on your white mirror. So you do the whole process again. You write down a list of all your positive character traits. For some people that's harder than making a list of negative traits. Because we're not taught to really recognize the positive good parts of ourselves, are we? You know? We leave that to other people to tell us. But, we need to make that value judgment on ourselves. And so you make this list of your positive traits, then you assign them to the elements, and you subdivide those lists into the strengths. Uh, the you know, really good positive traits, and, you know, middling, and hardly ever see. Okay? So that is the whole first month of your work, is going to be on creating your two mirrors. And that's a lot of introspection and that uh, um, <clears throat> contemplation part of your meditation exercises is all bound up in this, this work. It also bleeds over into the day. You know, you're, during the day you're going to notice your negative or positive traits and so you write them down for addition to your list later, okay? Um, now, the physical exercises are mostly about creating habits. Um, <clears throat> the, in the morning, when you arise, this is going to be a habit for the rest of your life. Uh, your morning routines. You're going to 
do a dry brushing, um, mostly of your torso and arms. This is the main, main area where you want to dry brush every day. Uh, depending on your bathing routines, if you shower every day, then you can go ahead and dry brush your whole body. Um, but if you don't shower or bathe every day, just be sure to um, get your upper body. You dry brush. Then <clears throat> comes the cold water bath, it's called. It's not really that. You don't immerse yourself in cold water in your bath. <laughs> Let's put it that way. In Barden's time, uh, most bathing took uh, place over a sink or a, a bowl of water and you had a washcloth and you'd freshen up every day. You wouldn't, uh, in his time, have gone through a whole bathing every day. Not a shower, not a bath, etc. So, the idea here is to wet in cold water on your rag and wipe it over your body. At least your upper body, okay? Now, this does two things. Number one, the brushing and this cold water bath open up your pores, and this will become important later on. Um, <clears throat> they open your pores and uh, excite your body. They'll wake you up to begin with. Um, and this, the difference between the body warmth and the cold on the outside of your skin brings out your energy. So it's a detoxifying process. You're detoxifying the pores by the brushing and then the subsequent drying. Uh, and you are detoxifying your body's energy. Um, it's what brings out things to the surface of your body. Your skin reacts, brings all the energy out. Um, Often we hold certain emotional traumas in different parts of our body. This helps release those traumas, which is important in the character transformation work as well. So once you've done the cold water bath, if, you're, if you are showering, then just turn the water colder. doesn't have to be ice cold, but cold enough so that you get that, 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 that difference between how you were feeling and that, that it feels cold now. So you get that difference that brings the energy out. Um, if you are in a bathtub, don't put your whole body in cold water. Drain the tub at the end of your bath and then have some cold water in a rag, you know, that you then touch to your whole body, okay? So, when you get through with that, Draw yourself with a rough towel. This again is a uh, detoxing of the skin. A uh, literal detoxing. It removes old skin and opens the pores, etc. And wakes you up. <clears throat> so, you're very awake at that point. Um, then, you will do some kind of exercising. Now, um, I am going to put in the uh, comment section below a link, and it's in this uh, page, this next page, a link to a video that displays a, uh, a four-minute exercise routine that is sufficient. It's, it energizes the whole body, um, yeah, and is good uh, for all the groups of muscles etc. So, the exercise at this point does not want to be strenuous. It wants to be more along the lines of stretching so that you are comfortable when you sit down to do your meditation. Okay? Um, and the body is awakened and alive and the energy is flowing. That is all. And then there is the, uh, the mystery of breathing. With the affirmations, the mystery of food, and the mystery of water. Now, the mystery of breathing, you are going to do some breathing every morning. 
and every evening in the course of your exercises. Um, and you are also going to do some uh, breathing with an affirmation at the as you wake up and as you go to sleep. You're going to take these two uh, into sleep and out of sleep with you. Okay? Uh, the mystery of food is every time you eat food throughout your day, there is no specific time to do this exercise, it's just whenever you eat food, you're going to be empowering, charging the food, as it were, with your idea, your affirmation, which will later, in the next step, be all about character transformation. And the same with the magic of water. It's every time you consume some water, or every time you encounter water, you are using um, the, the power of water to carry your affirmation or to capture uh, your affirmation and remove it from you. Okay? So, I'll get to that uh, more in the next page. So, those are the basic exercises of step one. Okay, now, this page shows you what the daily routine and the daily exercises are for step one. Uh, this is going to take four weeks to accomplish step one, okay? So, no, no farting around, you know, you got to get to it, and you got to dive in, and you've got to be serious about it. That's all there is to it. Um, so, every day during the day, you need to be conscious of the food that you eat, using your affirmation um, in your eating of food, uh, and also the mystery of water. So you got to be aware anytime you drink water or encounter water to insert an affirmation in there. Um, and you have to be um, attentive to your, of yourself in daily life. You have to be aware of what you are doing while you are doing it. To constantly be aware of yourself in the world. That is your goal. Self-awareness at all times. Now that takes a while to develop that kind of a habit. So you'll suddenly catch yourself, oh, you know, I've been doing that on autopilot. I had no idea what I was doing. Or I was thinking about blah, blah, blah while I was doing that. So the idea is to keep your mind on what you are doing throughout the day. Um, and that's something you have to a habit you have to start building right now. And you also, in that process, have to be aware of your character. Because, you know, during step one, it's all about creating your soul mirror. So, throughout your day, you must always be aware of what is manifesting of your character. Is it negative? Is it positive? What is it? How does it look? What, what, cue, what uh, cues it to arise? What dampens it? Da you know, all these things. Because you're, right now, in this step especially, you're getting to know yourself. Really, you're examining yourself all the time, okay? So, that's every day, all day. Every morning, when you wake up, you are going to do the following things. You're going to, as you wake up, be repeating your affirmation in your mind. Now, again, that's a habit that's going to take a while to develop. So, in the, some mornings, you'll be half awake and realize that, oh yeah, my affirmation. So you just do it when you remember it and eventually it will become habitual so you wake up and the first thing you do is your affirmation. Uh, then you'll do the, the brushing, the cold water bathing and the rough dry and the exercise. So that is first thing 
and then you will go into your um, your exercises, your initiation into hermetics exercises. That will take you. Oh, it varies. Um, sometimes it can be half an hour. Sometimes it's an hour. Sometimes it's two hours. It will vary, and you know it has to be a fairly fluid amount of time, and the time that you need, however long it takes you during your session, is how long you should take. It might be quick, it might be long, whatever. Um, <clears throat> okay, your exercises for week one are going to be the thought control, which is the observation of what is going on in your brain. So you close your eyes and you start observing. And you start detaching yourself from what is going on in your brain. Thoughts arise and your natural inclination is to jump right in and start thinking them. But you're going to learn teach yourself how to separate from what is going on in the brain and just leave it be. Observe it. Take note of it, but don't participate in it. That's the goal with the thought control. It, it, that word control is erroneous, really. Um, it's a, your brain becomes the control subject. You are detaching from it. You're not interfering with it. So it's what happens in your brain when it's all left alone and it becomes the control subject of the work you are doing. That unaltered uh, thing that you can always refer to. Okay? Different from the mind. Different from the mind. Okay. That, you will do a period of that. Your, your goal during step one is to achieve 10 minutes of uh, observing your, your brain without engaging in any of it, without getting lost in the thoughts. Um, it's very easy, very simple to do. There's no great mystery here. Then, after you do a period of that, you begin work on your list of char negative character traits. So you're starting to write down your black mirror. Um, that's meditation. You think about your character. You place yourself into the past. You, you look at who you've been, how you've been, in all different situations, and try to ferret out all the negative uh, traits, the instances of negative behavior, etc., that you can. And of course, that has to be your valuations, your judgments, not anybody else's, not society's, not your religion, not your parents, not your neighbor, not anybody but you. So, this is a process of what I call radical self-honesty. You need to be brutally honest with yourself and compassionate at the same time because you're going to see really in some instances ugly parts of yourself but you are not any one of these parts solely. No matter how bad this looks and you know what an awful person you are sometimes, that's not who you are as a whole. So I have to keep that in mind throughout the whole black mirror process. And you have to keep it in mind throughout the white mirror process too, that you are not, oh, the saint. You know, you are a human being. You are good and bad all mixed into one, okay? so. First week, you're doing the thought control, you know, the observation, the detachment from the brain, and working on your black mirror. That's all you're doing in step one, in the morning and in the evening. 
some point in the evening before you go to sleep. You don't want to associate your uh, initiation in hermetics exercises with falling asleep because you don't want to fall asleep while you're doing the exercises. So you want to do it at some point in the evening. It doesn't matter when, but at some point in the evening you have to do these exercises. So instead of spending time on Facebook or elsewhere on YouTube um, or Netflix or you know, you know it's a really much better way of spending an hour or two in the evening, believe me. So, that's week one. Two times a day, you do these exercises. You start every morning with, you know, the, the, the breathing, the, the bathing, brushing, etc., and the exercises. And then you get into your, uh, your initiation exercises. And then in the evening, you do your initiation exercise again. It's such a great way to end the day and begin a day. Okay, so week two, you will do the same morning, uh, beginning of your day, the exact same way with the affirmations as you wake up, then the cold brushing, cold water, ba bathing, the rough dry, and exercise. And then your hermetic exercises for both the morning and the night, uh, evening, will be, again, the thought control, the observation. You start out by detaching from your brain. Okay, this will be the first thing you do every day, probably for the rest of your life. You'll silence yourself. You'll just... Let it be. Okay? And you'll, you'll get to see, see what the state of your brain is in the morning and in the evening. Um, then you go to contemplation. This is a single-pointedness uh, meditation. Okay, you choose beforehand an idea that you want to fill your contemplation with. An idea that you want to explore. And again, take it from the theory section. For this week, the theory section is the place to be. <clears throat> okay? Because um, you're just practicing the technique at this point. So what you do is, okay, you've observed your brain. You've detached from your brain. Your mind is your awareness is independent of your brain at this point. So what you do is you bring in the idea that you want to explore. Uh, say it's the element fire. So you begin thinking about the element fire. And you just keep your mind on the element of fire. Now your brain will kick in. It might want to take you in different directions, but it can also support you are thinking about the element fire. That is contemplation. You do that. The goal here is 10 minutes uninterrupted. Um, fairly simple thing to achieve. You don't have to be too harsh with yourself. I think doesn't really count as an interruption um, if it just distracts you for a microsecond and you bring your attention right back. The thing to learn here is to bring your attention back and stick it. That's what you're learning is how to stick your awareness, your mind, where you want it and to keep it there for as long as you want to keep it there. And you know, that, that meditation could go on for hours if you really wanted to. Um, so, there is this period of contemplation and again you're working on your black mirror so you can also use this period of contemplation on your black mirror but it for this week I suggest it just be on these topics from the theory section so that you accustom yourself to the technique not something as personal as the black mirror work which 
you'll likely get distracted on if you do that at this point. So, you go again to finishing up your list of negative traits. You should finish that this week, about midweek or so. Okay? Then, you will shift to assigning the negative traits to the elements. So, you take your list of negative traits, your raw list, and then you're going to copy it into four separate lists, one for each element. So you have four elemental sections and you take and figure it out which it goes in and you drop it down in here. Okay? So, you now have a list that is divided into four elements. Okay. And so that should end the week, having done that. Now, then you again, you do this every morning and every evening. So you're doing your exercises 14 times in the first week, and you're doing it 14 times in the second week. Okay? In a row. Um, so, now, week three. Again, it's your morning routine. It's going to be the morning routine for the rest of your life. You do your affirmation, you get up, you brush, you do the cold water bath, you do a rough dry, and then you do a little brief exercising, and you sit down to your hermetic exercises. So week three, in the morning and in the evening, your hermetic exercises are start out observing and detaching from your brain. Again, that's always, it sort of sets the stage for what's happening. And then you go into your period of contemplation. Now again, best to do it with the theory section. Save the, uh, uh, the mirror work till the next step. Uh, use your contemplation in this way to en enrich your mind and your understanding of these basic hermetic principles. Um, so you have a period of contemplation, and then we're going to start practicing vacancy of mind. Now, to many people, this is very mystifying, but it's actually very simple. Um, it's really a, a, a combination of the first two meditation exercises, the observation and detachment from the brain, and then the single-pointedness, so instead of focusing on an idea, you're focusing on silence, where it's just completely blank. The, the thoughts that arise, you don't uh, engage with at all. Thoughts might still be arising in the background, but that's okay. You just ignore them. Just ignore thoughts and focus on the silence. And that's the, the vacancy. It's very simple, very easy to touch upon. You might have difficulty at first in quieting the thoughts that arise. Because you know, the mind wants to engage in arising thoughts. It's its habit. And the brain, definitely, the brain just will take off. That's its habit. And so what we're doing is we're building a new habit. That's all. And so in, when the mind wants to chase a thought, you recognize that that's what's happened. You're self-aware enough that you realize that's what's happened, and you let go of it and you come back to the silence. You do that any time, every time, that you get swept away by thinking, you just back off. That easy. You do that often enough and it just, you know, becomes automatic and you are able to focus on just the silence. And this is where you really begin to explore your mind, not the brain, but the mind. You're learning the powers of the mind. It can control the brain. 
it can focus itself on any thought at all and explore a thought. And it can be silent. It can be just a perceiving force. Okay. So, we're doing the um, vacancy of mind, and then we're going back to the mirror work. We're going to arrange uh, the traits in each of these elemental quadrants. We're going to arrange all the traits in the fire element. What is the most severe? What is the... Um, so what is the the rate the, the degree of severity of any given trait and arrange them in order so the most severe on top the least severe on on the bottom then go down to the water element the most severe on top the least on the bottom etc through all this so these lists are now arranged by element and by severity okay <clears throat> Then, if you finish that quickly, and it shouldn't take too, too long, again, um, this doesn't have to be exact, and it's a fluid thing uh, throughout the time you're going to be working with these mirrors. The severity of a trait will change. You know, one will go down, another might come up, etc. It's a very fluid, the personality, is character is very fluid. And especially as you start messing with it and changing it, you'd be surprised. <clears throat> okay, so that ends the exercises. There's thought, observation, contemplation, vacancy of mind, and then back to the mirror work. Um, so if you finish that, the mirror work quickly, you can go on to the white mirror, which is making a list of all your positive character traits. So, and then, as you go to sleep, you know, remember to stick your affirmation in there. And take your affirmation into sleep with you. So, that is week three. Now, week four is, again, by now it should be a habit. You are getting up in the morning with your affirmation and you're brushing your body taking the cold cold bath and the rough dry then your exercises and then you're sitting down to your hermetic exercises and again before you uh, in the evening you're repeating your hermetic exercises again so week four we start again thought control the observation the detachment from the brain and then we do a period of contemplation, again on the theory section of initiation into hermetics. Um, and then we go into a practice of vacancy of mind. Now this will, can be, should be, uh, a, a habit of a lifetime. You do these three types of meditation in a row. Now you'll find that going from contemplation into vacancy of mind can be very beneficial. Uh, you contemplate an idea, um, especially when you get to uh, contemplating the character uh, transformation work. Um, and then you take that idea into the vacancy of mind. In other words, you go directly from the contemplation of that idea into a vacancy of mind. Now, certain things happen in a vacancy of mind when you do this. It, it, it's like uh, the idea gestates. It matures like a ripening fruit. Um, and then when you leave the vacancy of mind, Go back into a contemplative state with the idea. And you will find that oh, there's so much more um, information, different perspectives, uh, wisdom has entered in um, to your contemplations. 
So, okay, so it's thought control, single point of contemplation, and the vacancy of mind, and then you work on your white mirror. You finish up your list of char positive character traits. Then you assign them to the four elements. And then you rate them all by um, strength. You know, the, your strongest positive traits are at the top, the weakest ones at the bottom of each list. So, by the end of your first month, you will have, you will have established these habits. You will have 28 days of waking up, 28 to 31 days, of waking up with uh, your affirmation, of, um, you know, doing your, um, your um, brushing, bathing, and dry, rough dry, and exercising every morning. 28 days of sitting down in each morning, of starting your day, with your hermetic exercises. You will have 28 days of the observation and, uh, well, let's put it this way. You will have 56 exercises in which you observed your thoughts, your mind. You separated from your brain. 56 separate times during the month, okay? You will have worked on your soul mirror 56 times at least during this month. Then you will have worked on the one, the single-pointedness, the contemplation Let's see, that will be 21 days. So 42 times you will have exercised your ability to decide where your mind is focused and stick it there. 42 times, okay? Then you will have worked with the vacancy of mind. You will have focused on the quiet. You will have done that 28 times by the end of the month. 28 times being in the silence. Okay? And you will have completed your magic mirror, you will have taken stock of your personality in this very physical thing that you have in front of you to look at and see who you are. In one month, it's amazing what you can do in one month if you put your mind to it, if you're disciplined about it, if you commit, truly commit to doing it. Okay, so I will post the pages that I presented here in a file uh, down below in the comments section, uh, an easy, easily downloaded PDF file, and I will put the link to the video that covers uh, the exercise routine that I'm offering up as um, uh, well, sort of a recommendation, I guess. Uh, it's a simple uh, routine and is really the, the, the length that you need to go to uh, before your hermetic exercises. You might be a gym addict, gym addict and that's fine, but that needs to be separate from your hermetic practice, from your hermetic exercises. It's not good to uh, stress yourself that much to um, really exert yourself that much before your hermetic exercises. It's not necessary. 
and not advisable. Okay? Well, I wish you well. I really sincerely wish you well. And I'm here. If you happen to need <laughs> any, um, any help, uh, during this month. Um, you have a copy of Initiation in Hermetics and you're ready to go. Um, I will do another video on step two. Uh, exactly the same. I'll outline the exercises for the whole step as a group and then go, do, go through it week by week. Um, and then again, the same for step three. Okay? So, until next time, good luck. Bye-bye.